Hi, Reverend Tony here with the spiritual challenge for the month of February on the theme of justice and equity. Think you're up for the challenge? Stick around. Before I get into this month's challenge, just a reminder that if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, like the video, share it with others, leave us a comment, ring that notification bell so I can tell you when the new videos come out. All that stuff truly does help me out a lot. Thanks a lot. The theme for February in my congregation is justice and equity. So my challenge to you this month is to take part in a poverty simulator. You can find a number of these poverty simulators online. You can also, if you're really adventurous, search out a poverty simulator that is happening in person, register and participate. These happen all over the place. Lots of social service agencies run them. Lots of churches and assistance ministries run them. Even colleges and universities have them and sometimes they're required for various classes across the curriculum. Here's a few that I can recommend to you that I've checked out online and clicked through myself. Playspent.org is a free online game simulation from the Urban Ministries of Durham that takes you through a series of choices in a choose your own adventure format type of thing. United Way Poverty Simulator is a free online experience hosted by the United Way of Goodhue, Washaba, and Pierce Counties in Minnesota. Again, this is an option where you click through the different options available to see how quickly your scarce resources are depleted trying to make ends meet and get by. The USA Today Network of Pennsylvania has one up, and on this particular program, it's a text-based program where you type in a lot of your responses, but other than that, similar also to spent in the United Way options. Monopoly is that classic board game, and this is played with at least four people, so you need yourself and three other people, but instead of every player starting the game at go with $1,500 of Monopoly money and no property, what you're going to do is draw lots for starting positions as follows. And you can decide to roll dice, flip coins, just volunteer to pick a, pick a roll. However you want to do it's fine. Player one goes first and starts the game with $6,000. Player one begins the game on Boardwalk and already owns Boardwalk Park Place and all the green properties, all with hotels already on them at the beginning of the game. Player one also owns all the railroads and both utilities and one of the get out of jail free cards. Player two goes second and starts with $3,000. Player two begins the game on Illinois Ave, already owning all the red properties, each with three houses already on them. And that means the player two goes into the game with double the starting money. Player one has much more. Player three goes third and starts with the usual $1,500 of Monopoly money. Player three begins the game on Oriental Ave and owns the light blue properties, but they are totally undeveloped. And player four and every other player, player five, player six, however many you're going to play with in the game, you follow in suit, fourth, fifth, sixth. And you begin with no money, just a plain piece. And other than that starting setup, starting arrangement, all the rules of Monopoly apply as usual. Now, it's theoretically possible for the people who start the game with no money and just their playing token to win. But it's not very plausible. It's highly unlikely. I actually used to do that Monopoly game as a class activity when I taught ethics as a high school teacher. It was pretty interesting to see how everyone responded to that. I had students who would sometimes rob the bank of the Monopoly game and, you know, help each other out. Some games would create assistance programs. It was fascinating. So experience poverty simulation. 
There's some good ones online. If you can experience an in-person simulation, I attended one in Conroe, Texas at a Methodist church some 10 years ago, and I found it so powerful. I really was enlightened about the realities of living in poverty in our culture. You know, it's one thing to work for justice and equity, to believe as a good-hearted person that we should work against injustices, that income inequality is not good and it's harmful. It's an entirely different matter to have to experience life as a person who's on the receiving end of injustice and inequity. And these simulations help you experience a little bit more emotionally what that's like, which is not the same thing as understanding that income inequality isn't good or protesting with Occupy Wall Street or something. So do the poverty simulation. Let me know what you think of it. And until next time, go in peace. Check out my website and blog at TonyLorenzen.com for even more resources that will open your mind, touch your heart, and inspire your spirit.